Yo, Abe. Yes. There's something about you. Just this, you usually don't shine like you do at this moment. I don't know if it's the sun, maybe it's the lighting, but you're just glimmering. Huh. I'm I'm glad you noticed. Uh, yeah, you know, is it because that coffee that you're drinking? Chimera coffee. Wow, where do you get that? Chimeracoffee.com with K's. With K's? Yeah. With the letter K, sorry. Oh, I didn't even think it was with a C, but it's with a K. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Chimera, Chimera Coffee. Yes. Now, if I want to get a little discount because I'm a cheap dude, what should I do? Show the art is the coupon code. Wow. Not so, to be confused with Kimura. Okay. Many people do. Okay, Chimera. they don't. Chimera. K-I-M-E-R-A. Coffee with a K. What's uh, the coupon code? Show the art. Type in the coupon code, show the art. You'll save some money. Don't be cheap. Get those nootropics in with your caffeine. Let's get it. It's only one way. One Boom. way. One way out. No easy way out. <laughs> <laughs> Our next sponsor is Invertigear. Go to invertigear.com. Type in the coupon code show the art 15. Geese, rash guards, shorts. Uh, Whether you like jujitsu or kill not. It. Keep going. I'm you done. don't want MC? No, that's it. You didn't want a hype man? I mean, you did a good job. Get that panda, baby. (laughs) Get it on your chest. We out. Invertigear.com. Check it out. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? You're listening to the Show the Art Podcast. We are your hosts, Ames and Abe. Can you talk a little closer to the mic? How how much closer do you want, you need me to the mic? Pretend Can you get close and then close. get a little further away and then get closer and okay. then get a little further away? What's going on, guys? You're listening to the Show of the Art podcast. How yes. are we feeling? Is that better? Yeah. Look that sound good. check. Nice. <laughs> it was nice. Okay, guys. Um, Abe, how you feeling, brother man? Good, man. Good. You, you ready? Coffee, are good. you ready to train today? You look invigorated, excited. Yeah. Just no. Today. <laughs> I woke up today, like I was just saying. I woke up today. It's one of those days. I was like, no matter what happens today, no matter who comes to train, today's a goddamn rest. So if Andre Galvao walks in like, hey, Abe, I want to train with you. If Andre Galvao himself walks into these doors and says, I want to take the noon class, I'm going to say, you're on your own. (laughs) (laughs) You are on your own. If Anderson Silva walks in here, he says, You know what I'm going to say? I want to train with you. I'm going to say, can you come back tomorrow? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if he walks in here with Jose Aldo, I'm gonna say you guys could train on your own. <laughs> Today's rest day, and you don't oh, you don't f with the rest day. Determination, I like that. I respect that, man. On that note, guys, um, alongside with us, our guest, our special guest is um, a powerlifting monster, bearded Samoan looking <laughs> dude right next to me. We got Mr. AJ Kamota. How you feeling, brother? I'm doing man? good. What's good? What's good? Good, man. Um, if you guys are wondering who he is, uh, if you one day show the art on Instagram, posted him lifting. So if you guys are ever wondering, so I uh, um, you know what? Let's do this. AJ, can you give us a, a quick background on your your lifting history? Um, in terms of lifting and training. Uh, a couple of years ago, I tried getting into bodybuilding, just working out in general fitness. Okay. I uh, just wanted to see how strong I could get, but it was mostly for vanity at the time. Okay. You know, just want to look You good. just want to look sexy. You know, I it was always kind of on the yeah. heavy chubby side. Okay. Everybody wants to look yeah, yeah. pretty <laughs> for the ladies. <laughs> so <laughs> how many years ago was this? Um, Maybe like six, seven years ago. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Like actually started touching like weights and stuff. Got it. Um, eventually I realized that I wanted to go towards some kind of like performance sport. Okay. Uh, I started getting more into rugby, watching it a lot. And I played with the club for a little bit. Nice. Turns out I'm really bad at rugby. Really? <laughs> Cause as big as I am, um, there's no point in being big and strong if you can't run on a rugby field. Oh, <laughs> so you got tired of a lot. Yeah. It was like, man, we, so we would like hit the scrums and hit the rucks and malls and I'd be good at those in the drills. Yeah. But all of a sudden open play, I was like <laughs> forty yards away from what was going on. Did you say scrums yeah. and hucks and malts? Oh, hucks yeah. and malts are like uh, th- that's like food and milkshakes. <laughs> okay, I never even heard of that. <laughs> so so for what's a what's a scrum like? Uh so in a scrum because um, Ava knows nothing about so it. Rugby, rugby um you Don't separate a team, it's like yeah, fifteen players America. in terms of forwards and backs. <laughs> forwards is like your bigger dudes. Um, backs are like the pretty guys who like run fast. So people like me, uh, pretty. Uh, yeah, you run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, where does a hybrid like myself fit into the the whole? bench? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm glad you well, asked. If you're, if you're fast, uh, but you can also like um, 
kind of be used to like hit maybe like in the midfield, kind of yeah. like as a yeah. bulldozer. Runner. Like yeah. I could stop the big guys, but I could also outrun, outrun yeah. the small guys. Well, yeah. guys maybe who are more like, like more a water boy, like hybrid, <laughs> like actual athletes yeah. are more like um, uh, like the outside backs okay. who are actually running on the field making tackles, or midfielders are running and like mm. busting through tackles. Oh, nice. I have a feeling that rugby, rugby, sorry, okay. does not give a, 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 a anything. About what positions are called, like football, there's the halfback, fullback, this back, that back, quarterback, your mama back, everything. <laughs> but rugby's like, all right, you just stand there. You stand there. You got to hit that guy. You got to run the ball. Plow through. It's just point A to point B. We're not worrying about the other yeah, schematics. In some way, there is uh, no real like position rawness. because everybody has to do offense and defense. So um, even if you're a big guy just making tackles, you got to be able to run with the ball and make yeah. passes. So you need that cardio. Yeah. Ah, um, so typically, you know, I'm a, I I always played as a like one of the bigger forwards. Yeah, how tall? Uh, what's what are your stats? What are you oh, just to to, just to give people like just a, so people know that the heavy breathing is not <laughs> some small guy breathing heavy. Um, yeah. I'm like six one six two. On a good day, I weigh like three thirty five. There you go, <laughs> so and then I'm pretty big. What are your stats, man? What numbers are you putting up? Are you pushing? My stats are I could eat like <laughs> twenty five tacos. <laughs> Wait, what are we talking 30, about? Thirty burgers. Yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of my big three lifts, uh, uh, and the big lifts are squat, squat, bench, bench and deadlift. Yeah. In terms of powerlifting, those are your competition lifts. Mm-hmm. Uh, for squat, we're looking at low to mid sixes. If mm-hmm. I'm feeling good, depending yeah. on the health of my knees and yeah. stuff. Uh, for bench, I still got a little bit of a poverty bench. Okay. It sounds good to normal people, yeah, like yeah. it's like low four hundreds, but oh, that that sucks. <laughs> I, that's it does. Sucks. Yo, get your game up, man. That's <laughs> Abe's warm up. It's, yeah. it's warm up, but let's be real. Like <laughs> considering how much I weigh, <laughs> that's like three burgers yeah, above yeah. what I weigh. I okay. put on four hundred pounds worth of weight vest <laughs> just to work exactly. out. That's just to work out. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. Call him Young Goku for nothing, man. <laughs> and then for the deadlift, and for deadlift is probably the one I'm leaning towards actually being good at. Um, like low 700s. What was your... Uh, at that meet, so just to give you guys a little... Uh, low it, uh, 700s. Um, yeah, so we were, he was at uh, his lifting meet, and he's at, he's that guy at that competition where you bring out your phone and videotape it, because that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Everyone around... Uh, he was the last guy to lift at the bar because it was around... What was the weight, to be um, exact? I closed Don't be modest. With, with 7-Eleven, exactly. 7-Eleven deadlift. <laughs> yeah. Holy 7-Eleven. crap. You know, you gotta so, give love to a place I get my donuts. Yeah, so that, that he's sponsored by 7-Eleven, so shout out to 7-Eleven. Oh, if, if 7-Eleven is listening to this and you <laughs> want to put your logo on my yeah. singlet, yeah. I am down. If you want to put... Him on your on your uh, what is it Slurpee cup? Yeah, Slurpee. Oh, by all means, yes. let's get this man on. A Slurpee I think cup. sales will go up at least ten percent. I know. <laughs> you want to give me some plates for the barbell that yeah. look like donuts? <laughs> We're good to go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, right before we we got into the podcast, I asked him like how training was going, and can you uh, tell them what you told me? Um, training is a little bit halted for the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, after that meet, I I went back to the gym. I did a little bit of like a deload. You know, after you max out on all your lifts, your body is kind of stiffening up pretty hard. So I needed to get in, do the lifts, just to start to loosen up. At a lighter weight, right? Yeah, around like 50% or so. Okay. And then a week after, I decided to go a little heavy. Okay. And it felt good. Um, I was able to deadlift, and I actually pulled, I switched a deadlift bar. So that um, competition we were at, uh, where I pulled 7-Eleven, it was like a fairly stiff bar because okay. of the Federation. So in the gym, I used the deadlift bar and I actually pulled it. And uh, at the top, it, I used bands. At okay. the top, it <clears throat> weighed around seven thirty-five or so. So mm-hmm. holy smokes! Yeah, I was getting no pretty big excited. deal. Yeah. I think I sh- uh, we looked. Yeah, over you that. showed me the video and uh, very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Very yeah. Felt pretty good. Yeah. So I was pretty excited to start training and peaking for a meet that I wanted to do in December. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so I deadlifted on this Friday. And I don't know what happened the next Thursday, um, even though I hadn't trained, I woke up and my knee was just super stiff. Mm -hmm. And Ames was asking if it was something I did in the gym. I was like, it was really unlikely that something happened in the gym because I didn't touch anything for a couple of days. Um, It was the couple of days right before we had this big thunderstorm. And so there was a drop in. Is it drop or is it a? I don't know what it is. But Wait, what, hold on, yeah. what are we talking like about? Like then change of I'm weather. I'm kind of an expert. I've yeah. watched a bunch of documentaries. No, you're not. Yeah, <laughs> but, but but moving on. So like, um, yeah. 
I don't know what it is like with yeah. like any kind of if you had surgery or if you have like certain kinds of tears, um, change in weather has a change mm. in air and barometric pressure. Yeah, and it ca- it it makes weird things happen to both of yeah. my knees. Yeah, I have can, can you let them know? Yeah, let them know what you have right now. So you have I, yeah, what you've been have training? What do you? Ha- <laughs> what have you been? The training kind of with? stuff I've been training through is mostly. Um, I've had like a slightly herniated disc in the in the past in, in my Yikes. back. Yeah. But that's feeling pretty good. I haven't really had back issues ever since I learned how to deadlift properly. Yeah. Um I'm but also dealing with these um tears in my meniscus. Both of my the meniscus in both of my So knees. you have two tears in oh. your meniscus. Yeah, I have one in my left, one in my right. I know exactly how you feel. I'm yeah. dealing with the same thing. Yeah. It sucks. And you it's could feel it, you know what I mean? So even just yeah. like walking around other than clicking, you just have random Do you ever feel cuz I I've I've heard from doctors that like there's days where there's weeks and months where I go by where it's like nothing beautiful. Yeah. And then there and then the next day it's like, whoa, why is that? I'm walking around. It feels like this thing is jammed into. So my that's knee. it. That's exactly what I'm talking. So about. the doctor was saying that sometimes when the flap is in the right direction. Yeah. It's good. You're good. But when it's pointing up or yeah. in a weird way, that's when. So that's what I was telling Ames is um, and because I went to the doctor, they said the likely issue that I'm dealing with is when you have meniscal tears. Yeah. Um, there's loose tissue dangling. Yeah. And normally if it's in the right way, it's pretty much acting normally. But something can happen where um, either the pressure can change the way it moves ah. or just from moving in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the yeah. loose tissue can get lodged in different parts of the knee. And yeah. all of a sudden you have a locked knee. Yeah. I've um, never experienced the lock knee where it, like it's it's, it's yeah, stuck. Where I've it's, never experienced I basically that. couldn't bring it to full extension Correct. or I couldn't bring it in like all the way. Yeah. So uh, all of a sudden just training just wasn't really a possibility. That damn yes. lock knee monster. The, yeah. The lock, <laughs> the lock knee. <laughs> That's the a lock good one. Ness monster. <laughs> the lock knee the monster. The lock knee yeah. monster. I'm, I'm kind of happy that it never happened to me, of course. Yeah. But um it is a hindrance, man. Yeah. yeah. And for a long time one of the main things for anybody who's suffering from like meniscus injuries, mm-hmm. and this is something that I, it took me the second one to figure out. You can't baby it for too long. Yeah. Mm. After a while, you have to start working out on it, and you have to start believing in yeah. it yeah. and putting trust in it and yeah. doing the stretches and doing exactly. the, the strengthening exercises. Because mm-hmm. when I started strength, tra- when I finally started strength training, that's when my knee felt strong and yeah. I felt confident. In yeah. it. True. So you ca- uh, my first one, I babied it for so long and it always nagged me. Yeah. And then the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, this is like a year later, I, I hurt this, the second one. And then it took me a few weeks to, to finally get moving again. And um, I was in jiu-jitsu, I was doing everything with the bat, with the original knee that I never could do. Mm-hmm. Like ah. movements that I always babied and I didn't try to do. I, I, I was just doing them and I was like, hold on. I I was too scared to do that before, yeah. and now I'm doing it no problem. Exactly. So that's crazy. I, I think one of the problems people make, like you said, is like we baby um, these things for too long, and all of a sudden our like our bodies will basically adapt around it. Where all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, you're just gonna live your life not yeah. functioning yeah. with yes. this knee. Yeah. Um, so people that, like doctors have to- doctors have told me that I have the option to get surgery, and what they'll do is they'll basically just cut off all the loose tissue, yeah, yeah. so that it doesn't get mm-hmm. stuck in the way. Now uh, yeah. I hear because the meniscus does not repair itself. Yeah. But now it, let's say it's like a sack, right? It gets cut open, shit. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then it's hanging. Yeah. When they cut it off, can it seal itself? Can it close up again? I don't know because you know what like I'm you said it's it doesn't repair itself. Yeah. I, I just think they're you're just looking to get rid of the tissue so it doesn't get Locked lodged up. in other yeah. places. Yeah, uh, that's tough. I but hear no there's matter what, the you're just never gonna be completely. Yeah optimized so uh let, let's uh this is a good topic let's get into it this way um the question will be how do you train uh for both jujitsu and then when you're uh, when you're lifting how do you train around those injuries so like what 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 did you do to kind of overcome all those things um in terms of and then you lifting, win. yeah um, training around these meniscal tears is knowing how to warm up properly for one mm-hmm. um, okay i second that yeah okay. using the right equipment if there is equipment that lends itself to these injuries uh, for yeah. me it was finally investing in in knee sleeves like neoprene sleeves i feel like saved my life mm. and i wish i got into them sooner yeah yeah 
uh, just uh, by keeping them warm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, before we go into that, let's back check your, the warm up. What would you guys do to warm up? So, say anyone is training with injury right now, like mm. say they have like a tear in their meniscus Oof. or whatever. Like, what would what would your warm up entail of? And you two, Abe? Um, around there, just making sure I get enough movement around um, my knee to start um, doing bigger movements. Okay. Because you know everything has to you know develop its elasticity and yeah, gotta yeah. get a good blood flow. Mm-hmm. It's also not just warming up the knee itself; it's also warming up all the muscles connected to it. Because a lot of times we have um, knee ailments, and mm-hmm. we we think it's the knee itself, but it could also be Hips, something tight or sore yeah, yeah, in another yeah. part of the body. It's usually never like w- yeah. the one thing I deal with is like injuries when someone's pointing at their shoulder. It's never your shoulder. Yeah. Uh-uh. You have a tight chest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have tight lats. Yeah, yeah exactly. Something in the back mm-hmm. is, is like you're compensating. That's why your shoulder For sure. has to work a lot harder. Yeah. yeah exactly. For me, I was. Uh, what my physical therapist told me was that my hips were the yeah my I mean my flexibility and my hip strength were were the main culprits. Mm-hmm. So he Absolutely. what he had me doing was a lot of hip strengthening exercises, um, fire hydrants, yeah, uh, laying on your side and like lateral Those lifts, clamshells, yeah, clamshells yeah. with yeah. the bands. Absolutely. Um, so after physical therapy, when they deemed me fit to to stop. Doing okay. physical therapy, those are the things that I started carrying into mm. jujitsu before class. So I, I would, and I would see that too. I would yeah, see that you, you don't do that. stop doing the physical yeah. therapy; just you got yeah. that. So I get down yeah. on my hands and knees. Go on, and yeah. and I'd elevate my 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 leg to the okay. side, uh-huh. and that's it. Uh-huh. And then what do you do when you get <laughs> sub force and you start warming up your hips? <laughs> then I then I train jujitsu. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, cool, that's cool, as far cool. as the story yeah. goes. Uh, <laughs> but also, not to mention. A lot of the stuff you were doing with me okay. when we were training, when we were working yeah, out together, yeah, the warm-ups yeah. you did with me, uh, because uh, I think you explained it to me where we got to start, when you warm up, it's not 0 to 60, it's 0 yeah. to 10, then 20, then 30, yeah. we're picking it up as exactly. we warm up, exactly. that concept yeah. helped me out a lot. Yeah, it's just, uh, the one thing that frustrates me, whether it's like in jiu-jitsu or lifting, it's just, when people warm up, they're just moving, they're trying to finish as fast as you can, man, it's just, it's a, there's a reason why it's called the warm-up, it's yeah. to get your body going, yeah. man. Feeling like you good. might as well start with the thing that's yeah. least stressful. Exactly. You know? And I, I understand because it's boring. Yeah. And, and that's why a lot of people will work through injuries. That's why people get hurt is because they want to do those little, those small things yeah. that will help you out. I don't th- it's not even just that it's boring. Um, at least for me, sometimes mm-hmm. it's a, it's the temptation to conserve energy. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. You know, like okay. if I'm building towards a big lift. Okay. I Actually, I will do this where I will see are there – it it seems bad, but are there corners that I can kind of cut yeah. um, to conserve energy so I can have the biggest lift possible? Absolutely. At the same time, you don't want to have to trade off so much yeah. that you have diminished. Because yeah. then you're going to start cutting off more. Yeah, exactly. I more wanted to ask you, how did you injure your knee? Like, not from a medical standpoint, but like, now that I think back, the accumulation of this or this recurring problem that I was neg- that I was doing, or the thing that I was neglecting that led to the knee injury. Um, I could. Probably attributed to two main things. One was not learning how to lift properly mm-hmm. early enough and lifting with my ego mm-hmm. when I was, uh, this was like early on before I got into powerlifting. So I found out that doing things like squatting improperly is horrible for your knees because your your knees will track in a direction that is not good. Inside. It'll yeah. start going inside. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and that puts pressure on the knees. And also not not squatting to proper depth leads uh leaves pressure on your knees as opposed to transferring it from your hips to knees and and standing up sure so So, that happened yeah so if you're cutting it short guys don't be a quarter squat a quarter squatter meaning you kind of say um a full squat is like ass to grass i could go all the way down yeah a lot of times uh, most of the time when it gets heavy people will squat just like because you're afraid to, yeah. to not yeah. be able to come yeah. back up. Exactly. Right? So but when you do that, you're jacking up your knees. In powerlifting, mm. the legal squat is uh, the top of your hip crease has to drop below um, the height of your knee. Mm-hmm. So it's, it doesn't exactly have to be ass to grass. But that, I would say, is ass to grass for some people. Yeah. 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 So depending on your flexibility. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So quarter squatting, you're, like, you're not even hitting parallel. 
yeah. and you do that because you want to hit this big weight, but yeah. not officially do it. It, it just doesn't mm-hmm. make sense. Yeah. You might as well keep the weight down and do it properly do to properly. build things yeah. up. Because yeah. you, you will hurt yeah. yourself, whether it's like quarter squat or when those knees start diving uh, in. Yeah. When those knees start diving in, that's basically letting us know, like whoever's yeah. coaching, or just whatever, it's just letting us know that you're not activating mm-hmm. your glutes. You're yeah. not getting your glutes fired up. Yeah. So it's all kind of knees just uh, pushing that weight up. Yeah. One thing that helped me, or that that – that frequently uh, had me injured, whether mm-hmm. it was meniscus or whatever, little ligament t- uh, strains or sprains yeah. or whatever you want to call it, or just, you know, you get up and, man, my shoulder f- feels like pins and needles, mm-hmm. um, was the warm-up. Yeah. As a young guy, I mean, I'm still young, 27, yeah. but 20, 21, as a young guy, I would approach things like competitions, jiu- jiu-jitsu tournaments, like, I don't want to warm up too hard and get tired. Yeah. So let me just go in. Plus, I, at one point, I had this weird mentality where, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to warm up if somebody's getting into a street fight with me. Sure. So I was thinking that mentality <laughs> sometimes, too, kind of like warrior mentality. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it all was based around me trying to conserve energy mm-hmm. and never really doing the proper work and experiencing the proper work to know that a nice, good workout where you break a sweat is not going to get you tired. In yeah. fact, that's going to help you perform better and mm-hmm. it will prevent the injuries exactly and i can't tell you how many times i went into tournaments quite a few times where i didn't warm up properly mm-hmm. you know a couple of burpees a couple of squats a yeah. couple of push-ups that's nothing yeah and you know finish the, the competition with something messed up yeah mcl yeah. lcl uh, ankle ankle something and yeah, i'm like man. what is going on i'm young why am i d- it's just the warm-up factor. Yeah, the warm-up it, it's a you go zero to 100 basically like if you're lifting or, f- or if you're rolling yeah. literally especially yeah. man can you yeah. imagine so it's just like if if you think the warming up whether jujitsu or any kind of athletic thing is yeah. going to mess up your performance you need to get in shape i know yeah because yeah man it's it's not even like or you, you know need to listen to this podcast or things like that to educate you on yeah. no 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 so yeah. for word of advice for people is right. like do a proper warm-up how do you know when you're properly warmed yeah. up that's the question yeah, yeah. Well, I, for, I'm uh, asking you. Uh, for me um i get because I'm very mobile, so it and immobile, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't take uh, a long time for me to get right. Yeah, because you're, you're sitting friend, down all day on your butt. Absolutely not. So <laughs> it takes me for me. It takes me like five to ten minutes. It could take someone else ten to twenty minutes. So mm. it really depends on you. My whole thing is just to kind of get the body and the joints warmed up and ready to go. So mm-hmm. for whatever I'm performing, if I'm doing jujitsu, I'm doing a lot of crawls, a lot of jumps, and so lateral. my question is when when does a, an amateur know that? All right, I'm good to go. Uh, uh, what do you, you need just to feel, feel a little sweat? You, you got to feel it. You'll yeah. feel it. Well, You'll f- you you probably will have some sweat going on, but I think you should at a certain point, especially with any kind of amateur um, competitor, you got to just listen to your body, and mm-hmm. you could feel when parts of your body are being activated. Yeah, you know, if you're yeah. like warming up. Your hips at a certain point in your own. Oh man, my hips feel are loose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they feel nice. You yeah. start to feel invincible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you do push-ups, when you first start going to push-ups, you're like, oh man, this is tight. But once you get to the second, third set, like, yeah. oh, it's yeah. not as bad. Yeah. Just like if you go into like any kind of shoulder movement, just mm-hmm. warming it up. You'll know by like by after the first set. The first set is always brutal, but after that, you kind of feel mm-hmm. better, and then you just kind of work with that. It's all kind of like um, practice and. Uh, Speaking of all this, yeah, it makes me respect a guy like Bruce Lee. Wait, because yeah, that guy was known st- countless stories of him just everywhere on movie sets mm-hmm. at restaurants oh yeah just stretching no kidding stretching and Good just moving him. around and moving his body and, yeah. and working on his flexibility he was a step ahead of the game man yeah, far definitely. beyond absolutely anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah and um but like it's like there you go and guy uh, you know other guys to speak of um cobrina okay. cobrina is a is a jiu-jitsu black belt He's like 40 years old or mm. damn near close to it. Looks like he's 25. Yeah. This guy's a stud. Yeah, good <laughs> yeah. for him, man. Um, and he does capoeira, super flexible. But one thing that he always talked about was, I stretch all the time, man. You got to yeah. stretch all the time. Yeah. You got to stretch. You yeah. got to stretch. You got to stretch. That's how you become the best. Um, so I respect those guys a lot. Yeah, you just know? mobilizing. Yeah. It's just I, I, the guys that I respect in, in any kind of mm-hmm. um, Let me guess, like platform. Kobayashi? That's one of your heroes? <laughs> Because you're an eater, I could tell. Why'd you pick the Japanese guy? How come we didn't pick the current champion? Who's the cu- current champion? Exactly. 
I don't oh, know man. why I feel really <laughs> fat for knowing who the current champion is. It's, oh, that, who is it's that? that white guy, right? Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, Joey Chestnut just Joey got Chestnut. beat. Oh, oh he did. really? Yeah, by this uh, breaking news guy, Matt guys. Stoney, something like that. I think he's South a South Asian hothead. dude. Oh, is he? Yeah, there you go. Unless we're that taking is a back head name. Yeah, yeah. no, but he's. I mean, he's from here. Yeah. Yeah. But Kobayashi was is a legend. Yeah, we can all agree. We can, yeah, that 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 we could agree upon. <laughs> What's weird about Kobayashi is I remember randomly they did this that he's jacked. This, yeah, but he is when he got jacked, that was like the beginning of the end for him. Really? Oh. He was in his prime when he was, he was skinny. a skinny dude. All yeah. of a sudden he was like, "Oh yeah, competitive eating. You got to actually develop some muscle." So they did a documentary and I he saw got that. jacked on he MTV. Was huge. There's a documentary about yeah. it. It was an MTV True Life. It was at something. The time. Dude, I check it out. I'm a competitive rare. eater. He looked like me in the mirror, but just a little more light skin. I'm a little Dark caramel yeah. macchiato. Yeah. You're saying hair. before he started he had muscle. No, no, I mean oh, after. after. Post, oh. post, 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 yeah, yeah. post the like after he ate like yeah, 60 hot me dogs. <laughs> Kobe that's Amesy. when he started no, no, looking no, no, before. Kobe Amesy. Kobe yeah. Amesy. Yeah, Kobe yeah. Amesy. And then he lost. Amesy Ashi. Amesy Ashi. <laughs> How did we get into this? Oh, the one. Yeah. It's just oh. the one. The 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 competitor. <laughs> the competitors. The the athletes that that I respect and admire. The ones that do all the little things. Like yeah. They take the time out when yeah. you know, like. For for a lot of power lift is all they want to do is squat bench deadlift. They don't want to do lunges. Mm. They don't want to do things to develop the shoulders. Like in jujitsu, they want to take take the extra time out yeah. to practice a few more things. Like when no one's watching or whatever, sure. it's just like, what are you doing? Man? Now let me ask you two guys a question. This is something that I just started implementing because of that reason of those guys inspiring me to say work on your craft all day. Yeah, right. I visualize jujitsu all day, but how do I how do I work on my physical all day? So one thing I've been trying to do is like. Just a little exercise, like bar hangs all day. Yeah. Like every time I'm around the bar, I'll hang and try to hang True. for 30 seconds. Um, little squats here and mm -hmm. there to work on my hip flexibility. And I'm trying to do that all day. Mm. Is there something that you guys do all day? And like little pieces, not to not to warm up, to break a sweat, just to like... Just to get something going yeah. even throughout yeah, the day yeah, when yeah. you're not technically practicing or working exactly. out. Um, yeah, like we were saying before, I, I try to stretch like throughout the day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, especially because I do sit around and and like read and work on the computer a lot. Yeah. Um, like at least like ten times a day, I'll I'll get up and I'll stretch, stretch my back, stretch my legs, mm. just to keep moving. Mm -hmm. And other than that, um, I always think of what little thing I could do throughout the day that will kind of add towards my lifting game and like in the long run. Mm. Yeah. Huh. So it'll be something like if I have a an elastic band at home. Normally we use them for warming up before. Uh, before we start lifting anything, mm -hmm. I'll just do some like band pull aparts um, because I think that even though it's like nothing, if you do it every day, mm, you know yeah. it's kind of like it accumulates. You yeah, know? yeah. See, my my whole thing was, I saw the movie Tarzan like last week. Okay, how was that? It was pretty good. Was it? It was pretty. Uh, to be honest, cool. when I saw it, I was like, ah, I'd rather watch Sound no, of Lucy. It was pretty cool. Like, ah, I'd rather watch yeah. Sound of Music. Yeah, you know what? Here's the uh, thing. Unless it has like a big guy eating a lot of food in it, you're not interested in it. <laughs> or just not a big guy. Yeah. Um, no, but it was a pretty, it was just like a fun little movie. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the you, guy is you. very inspiring because he's jacked, he's ripped. Um, he's moving around like a ninja. <laughs> moving around like a ninja. Wear nothing yeah. but a loincloth. Yeah. I'm, I'm down. Hey, I'm, I'm down, down for that. Yeah, I'm always up for that. Luscious <laughs> locks. Uh, luscious locks. You know, you got the CGI with apes and shit. Yeah. And he's battling. By the way, I was at the Bronx Zoo. I saw gorillas. Mm. Badass. I, that I was like, like a highlight. Yeah. That was a highlight. Like humongous huge yeah. man and they were like playing tag i'm like man they what would crush the? me <laughs> and, like it was cool because the little baby gorilla <laughs> started pounding on his chest in front of the, oh, the I'm like, that's, that's pretty cute, cute. you I ever seen the video of the silver back running at the zoo running <sighs> into the, the glass yeah oh, it. Man, he broke oh. it it like cracked the glass yeah it like slammed that yeah. glass no hard. way yeah. and the kid's like holy crap yeah I'm when we first started walking through we saw the gorillas just running i jetted <laughs> I, I was like, let me see what the hell's going on. Freaking dope, man. You remember yeah. that Kevin Hart joke? He took his kids to the zoo. They're looking at the gorillas. The gorilla hit the glass real hard, and he's like, in my head, the gorilla just got out. So he started <laughs> running. He started running with his kids, and he thought he felt something grabbing at the back of his neck, so he just dropped his kids. Like He dropped like the car seat. He was like, like, ah. he's like, get off me. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, you just dropped your kid. He's like, no, they're coming after yeah. me. <laughs> 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 but yeah, getting back to my story about yeah, Tarzan. Your, your shitty Tarzan story. Yeah. Uh, your, uh, I don't care. Shut up. But go uh, on, Tarzan. Anyway, uh, so shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, I was thinking if a human 
were able to eventually how can a human build up to be able to hang and move around trees like mm, like, like a, the rolk like an like a monkey can yeah. right i mean not to that ability but what if they can we have you know we don't have the the same dimensions they have longer arms and shorter legs yeah. but what if we can get close to that or or closer to that than than where we are at now yeah. what are some things that we could do and i was thinking Bear crawls, when hangs. i was a baby I couldn't know. I didn't know how to walk. I I couldn't physically walk until I, I started standing up and true. walking. Walk now. I don't think about walking yeah. at all. Yeah. So, but it took standing up very often to mm-hmm. do. So I'm thinking, what if I try to hang frequently yeah. all day for longer periods of time? Won't those muscles develop? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's what you could do. You could set up like a like a pull up or hang. Yeah. Uh, program where you just you're just trying to make it a little bit harder week by week. Like say you could hang for like thirty seconds. Say you yeah. go to like a pull up hold and hang there for thirty seconds. Yeah. Next week try to get thirty yeah. thirty five seconds. Or if you did like three sets of holds, go mm. four sets the next yeah. week. And that's how you kind of like I always say. I try to get one percent better. Yeah. No, he didn't say that. Each he's never he's never said that. <laughs> that that came from my father. <laughs> Bruce Lee, who came from uh, me. Uh, yeah. I'm your father. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, Darth <laughs> Vader. So, but but like when when you're trying to like things that I like to do is well, I just like to to model after me. Be done. <laughs> <laughs> so what I like to do is I like to focus on. I like to sit down. Like, what am I weak at? Basically, nothing. So I have to really <laughs> dig deeper and be like, okay, what can I get better at yeah. that I've perfected. I'm like, oh, maybe I could work on my pulls, my mm. my pull up yeah, game. Yeah, because your arms are looking my, a little my pull up game a little <laughs> a little soft. <laughs> so maybe I could get my pull up game a little stronger. So, so pull up game, yeah, pull okay, up. Just yeah. Make sure. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got because it. Because right. there 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 is no pull up game for you. No, there is. A, it's just it's like I yeah. said, I perfected everything. You're pulling. I was up Bruce Lee before Bruce Lee, even though I was born plate. later on. That's your pull up game, pulling up. Well, food burrito, from the plate. chipotle. That's why I say you got one normal mm. arm and one cake arm. Because that arm is, pri- its priority in life is to pick up a spoon mm. and shovel cake. Shovel, yeah. And by cake, mouth. he means weights, guys. So <laughs> just in case you guys are wondering, like, oh, yeah. what do you mean by cake? It means it means weights. We're, like, we're all about serious. Training. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jack. Yeah, <laughs> comprehension. So, how did you get to the level of lifting heavy? Of lifting weights. heavy? No, like, how did you get to that high level? Because you're. I don't know the stats, but yeah. you're you have to be at an elite level in the world. Mm-hmm. Not not many people could deadlift seven hundred plus pounds. Let's yeah. just be serious. Well, actually, right these now. days a lot more. Like, well, he's totally being humble out. right now. No, no. In comparison it's, to the rest of us, yeah, yeah, How many yeah. people are in this world right now? In there's America? a lot. Yeah. In, about in, in, in on Earth, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, homie, there's a lot. Is it like two hundred billion like, people? You're like, yeah, yeah, maybe one a uh, one percenter. Yeah, in terms of like people as a whole. I mean, in terms yeah. of powerlifters, I'm not like quite there. Uh-huh. Uh, my like my deadlift is pushing on like national elite. Um, if I could get like another like sixty pounds on my deadlift, that's mm. technically like an elite deadlift. Yeah. Okay, but again, like there's that's like, like a year away. Honestly, it's like I, a year or I two away. So, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, like like nine months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you went exactly. That's cool. About like seven and a half <laughs> months, and a you'll reach it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. following his career, so I know. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Um, I'm I think what it really took was. Uh, just with a lot of other things that we compete in, um, putting the time in to actually get stronger mm-hmm. and also like learn the craft. Yeah, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make in terms of powerlifting is assuming that it's just this brute strength sport. Uh, we forget that it's maybe not as much of a skill sport mm-hmm. as other things. Mm. Like obviously, um, like jits is way more technical and also reactive. Yes. Um, but there's a lot of technicalities to all the main lifts as well. Yes. Like the yeah. in my when I pulled seven hundred on my devil deadlift for the first time, it was only like a year and a half before that when I was still pulling like five hundred. Mm. So it, and I know Huge it's shot. not like I just got two hundred pounds stronger. Mm-hmm. I just had to learn how to do it better. You have to take advantage of every single Absolutely. Like opportunity, not opportunity. Yeah. Every single advantage, like leave no stone unturned. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just like yeah. that's like you getting a submission and just getting a point. You know mm. what I mean? It's like that. That uh, like yeah, yeah, black yeah, yeah, belt yeah. is just like that one little minute thing. You now, up. one thing I always tell the students, and this this is a concept that that I that helped me get better is yeah. and relate to other people. I'm a brown belt in jujitsu, so that's like one belt away from black belt yeah, to put in yeah. perspective for some people yeah. um 
the difference between me and let's say a white belt or a blue belt or even a purple belt or just anybody that hasn't had the uh, amount of experience that I have. Um, and then there's people better than me, of course. But it's r- I like to compare it to RAM speed. Mm. What does RAM speed on the computer do? It allows multiple things to operate and function at the same time. So when I s- when I do jujitsu, I feel like I have mm. a better RAM speed than the next guy. Then Ames, let's say Ames true. a blue belt. Yeah. Ames has been training less than two years. Cool, that's great. Yeah, I have a better RAM speed from more from Absolutely. doing more. That makes so sense. when we're grappling, I can worry about. Little details on offense, little details on defense, my posture, Mm -hmm. defending against his posture, worrying about the next step, worrying about what he can do and what I can do to counter his next step all at once. Whereas he can maybe only do worrying like breathe in, breathe out. Or or you can worry about more than that. Like you're you're just not you just can't do as much. So exactly where I win is on the things you couldn't do all at once. Yes. So would you say is the same thing? I would say that's the exact same thing. Um, Obviously, just on a powerlifting level, you know, there are a lot of things that when you start, you have to cover like your basics. Like, let's say if we're still talking about deadlift, uh, one of the main things we're telling people is, you know, make sure you breathe in. Um, hold Diaphragm. your core, yeah. and we're saying keep your back straight. Um, at a certain point when you're doing it long enough, you're not worrying about that because you already know you're doing it. It's an eight. Yeah. So then I get to worry about um, ah. what I'm doing with my hamstrings, what I'm doing with my lats, what I'm doing with even like the smaller muscles in my body, just like what you're yeah. saying. Damn. If I don't have to worry about the big things, I know how to worry about the little things, which lets me recruit more mm. muscle fibers, which means I get to lift weight with more of my Damn. body. Yeah, man. That's, that's, where, that's where it gets into. That's yeah, it. man. So it's like for beginners, it's um, you try not to overflow them with too many yeah. tips because they're already mm-hmm. thinking. Yeah. Like I do maybe one or two things. And like, you know, they're not going to have it perfect. But after that, I'm just like, okay, maybe we can add this one. Because yeah. if you, it's like one thing I see a lot, like, um, not newbie coaches, but um, inexperienced coaches, like trying to throw so many things at too one much, time. Yeah. That's yeah. too much, man. Now like, you could uh, attest to that with jujitsu, like yeah, I can things. attest that from training. But how would you? I felt that way when you were trying to teach me the clean, the clean. Yeah, so remember, yeah, yeah. I, I remember you were like, all right, let's just do this move, just the hinge, yeah. and then this. like maybe explain that to people. So what I like to do with with the movements, I try to figure out okay. What are use me, don't use me as an example because that's an exception because I I because you suck at everything the skill yeah. very quickly. It took him about a year like a to, lot to, to catch up. Quicker. It <laughs> took me about five minutes. <laughs> so for anyone that um that I'm trying to teach any kind of movement, I try to have like a big three mm-hmm. to to cue them up. It's like because uh, I've um I've went through so many um clients, so many members. I have like a lot of uh data that I've like kind of yes. pulled forward. So I know the things that I see most. Like say for example for squat, the knees always dive in. So I'm going to give them a cue like um we have mats on the floor. I tell them um to step between two mats. Try to spread the floor while as you're squatting. Mm-hmm. So when you when you try to spread the floor, you're activating your glutes. So your knees will no longer track inside mm. right another thing i like to do if you're uh going to your squat i'll put my hand right on your back okay i'm the gonna say as your squat, my back or the, yeah uh, the on your traps your little your little tiny traps <laughs> so i'll put on your smurf ass traps <laughs> and then i'll tell you a hey, push against my hand okay so that will entail your back getting nice and tight because mm. a lot of people think like oh when you squat it's just the legs now a lot of times when people start dumping forward or start leaning forward yeah. it's because their back there's no upper back yeah, tightness it's right? like a breakdown in your posterior chain a lot of times like exactly. People folding over. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell them yeah. two little things, and then from there, I'll I'll watch them lift. Like I, I would watch, like when when A was doing this clean. It was actually pretty. He actually caught it the same day, which was really impressive. Yeah. So oh, he wasn't lying. Nah, Thanks, no, 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 no. Yeah. He actually. I'll Thanks. give him that. Yeah. Like every cue, like um, it, it's funny because he's not real athletic. But moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but like every cue, like I would tell him these two things. Okay, so like I would tell him the uh big jump or use a, like lock out your hips and your knees you lock it out. okay let me add one more thing now that he has that down and once i see you'll know when someone's comfortable because they're not looking up at the air they're not pausing they're just going to the movement they're just reacting because once you start adding thinking it's not going to be as mm-hmm. fluid just because it's going to start breaking down okay like let me let me screw in my feet let me take a deep breath look up neck tight back straight mm-hmm. all that stuff you know what i mean so i'll just add like little layers layer by layer by layer but then by then i created a monster <laughs> well i think um that goes into the next thing okay. like um speaking of you yeah. i feel like you've caught on to jiu-jitsu very quickly mm-hmm. and maybe that's why i caught on to the clean very quickly exactly. is because you know the learning process 
can be translated in many different ways. Yes, absolutely. If you're a technical step by step learner and somebody teaches you in that manner, you're going to develop very quickly. Absolutely. It does man. help that you are in a physical fitness profession and then you're coming into something that does require a level of physical fitness. Yeah. But you're a very technical learner. Yeah. Same thing with you. Like, mm. you guys have to learn step by step. Yeah. And like you said, develop the big things. And then once you get those down, you can start worrying about little mm-hmm. and then keep narrowing yeah. it down. And some people have better mind-muscle connection than other people in terms of, like, body awareness. Mm. Yeah. Um, but we have seen a lot of people just don't have that uh, mental capacity where it's really going to be more through long-term repetition. Yeah. 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 It's more natural. Yeah. Yeah. And then they start – I feel like – those people eventually they just start looking at themselves and like all right i've been doing this for two years Mm -hmm. finally it starts clicking like all right i know kind of what i'm doing yeah and i know that i'm kind of a little off so they start worrying about themselves yeah as as opposed to being coached like i've coached you as much as i think i could coach you now it's time for you to look in deep and start looking in the mirror as you're doing things learn yourself and feel it out yourself absolutely the the one thing that i've noticed the the people that usually do well it's not even like like athleticism it's just a few things one is your ego Mm -hmm. okay the the people that don't pick it up as fast is because they think they could get it in an instant like say you're teaching a technique or you're you're teaching a squat they're like okay i got it and they don't they don't try to practice whatever you taught and it's frustrating i hate it's it when they cut you off all right i got it, I got I got it. it. I got it. it's that I ego it. thing it's it. like you know what okay because you're only hurting yourself you know what i mean yeah. that one and just taking the time like I, I like people that ask a lot of questions because i know like they they're taking it seriously it's just like okay i want to get better what am i doing wrong yeah. that kind of thing so it's just uh, e- ego was a big thing like when we're going into when i first joined in my head is just like i'm gonna learn what I, if it takes me a long time it takes me a long time if not and not so I was just and I was good with that so mm-hmm. it's just like I'm in no rush yeah. to, to perfect anything I feel like I don't care what profession you're in who you, like how whatever level you are in that profession yeah. you could be Michael Jordan in 97 mm-hmm. in his Ooh. prime Dang. prime baby if somebody's teaching you, you're you are a student at the lowest level. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you act that way, even if you're the best in the world, exactly. If you act that way, when somebody's trying to deliver knowledge to you, you will gain the most. One hundred. You'll reap the most reward. Yeah. I, I think it's also a case of, um, if you're really like a student of the game, and if you're always trying to get better, you also aren't going to rule out any place that you would be learning from. I think, mm-hmm. um, in terms of ego, it's uh, the, one of the other issues is. We assume that certain people just have nothing to offer us mm. yeah. when that's just not the case. Yeah. Sometimes like not having an ego in what you're doing means that you'll listen to any source of yeah. information. Yeah. 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 Any, anything so, can help. So maybe give some details on how people could get started into powerlifting heavy and like what what does it take? Like how often are you working out? True. Like I've always read stories uh, growing up. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a hero of mine. Mm hmm. And I bought his encyclopedia book, and I looked through it, and it was fun to Some look pictures at. Pictures of me, come on. Yeah, there's <laughs> pictures of Ames in there, and the footnotes. <laughs> and um, is that in the front of the back footnotes? Uh, the footnotes back. is no. Footnotes is the bottom of the page. It shows how much. Okay, that's so why it's called footnotes. There you go. Uh, true, true, true. That's so exactly wherever the said. smallest picture was, that was Ames. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> but he always talked about like I, on leg days, I had to do. Um, he did a lot. Like, he had to do two workouts in a day. <laughs> and it's like, monster. I did back and buys in the morning, and yeah. then I rested for 12 hours. Then I did my legs at night. Yeah. And it's like, huh? What? Yeah. Yeah. You did two weightlifting sessions in one day? So yeah. is that something that you have to go through? Um, I think the further I am from a competition, um, it will be more like that. I'll get the most amount of general work in um, further from a competition. And the closer I get... Um, the more it will tailor the, down, yeah, tailor down to specific lifts. Mm-hmm. Um, that is both in terms of exercise variation, um, and in terms of like reps. So, yeah. can you it, give examples? Okay, so okay. if I'm if I'm like nowhere near a meet, I will do. Say you're three months out. That's an, is that enough, or you want six months? Uh, out? Yeah, we'll go. Say we're like four or five. Okay, out. let's go. Let's do it. Um, I will. Let's say if I'm thinking about building up my squat. Mm-hmm. One, I'm thinking about how do I grow the muscles that I need to have a bigger squat, you know, because having a bigger muscle will lead to. Yeah, an that's the core. Exactly. Correlation. Yeah. Not so it's there not as if powerlifting doesn't have any bodybuilding because you need to get bigger muscle to have basically a higher ceiling to use yeah. it. So I'll do 
um, s- slightly lighter weights to have more sets and more reps. Like I'll do a 10 by 10. Uh, like I, I benched uh, last week and I just did like a 10 by 10 on bench with like 245. 10 sets, 10 reps, yeah. but 10 by 10. Yeah. 10 oh, sets. it wasn't 10 by 10. Actually, yeah. I couldn't squeeze that out. I got like a 6 by 10. Okay. <laughs> but you're doing like 10 reps and then 10 reps and then yeah, 10 reps. exactly. Yeah. And what's like the rest time? Like a minute, two um, minutes? Yeah. Eight minutes? If I'm <laughs> trying to get feel like more like cardio in, then I'll, I'll take like no more than a minute. Okay. Yeah. But if I'm trying to get the most out of my workout in terms of like building strength, yeah. I'll wait like three to four minutes on an upper body workout and I'll wait like six minutes for like a now leg let workout. me I don't want to stop you from your story, yeah. but let me ask a quick question about that do you maybe not a question, but do you agree with this? It takes a certain level of understanding your own body to know how much rest you actually need. So that you know you're not being lazy, like you're taking a little extra yeah. rest, but like this you is what take I need. too much. Yeah. yeah, because that's the number one question everybody asks when yeah. they look in these magazines, mm-hmm. these books. How much rest in between sets? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it one minute, two minutes, three minutes? Yeah. I think it also depends on your goals. If yeah. your goals are, say, to cut down, limit your rest time, so yeah. you can treat it like cardio. Mm. But if your goals are purely strength, there is like scientific evidence that shows. If like on especially on bigger lifts, if you wait long enough to drop your heart rate back down, mm-hmm. um, you'll have more returns in terms of like um, gains strength at the gains. End. Yeah. yeah, like they show it was like a seven percent difference. Wow, for yeah. somebody who waited like four to seven minutes compared to somebody who waited yeah. like less than two. And they think I'm lazy. I'm, I'm yeah. just trying to yeah. get more gains. It's and, one of the, in jokes, the world like, of powerlifting. Yeah. It's a lot. Like different. we'll be like working out when. Like the fitness class is doing their class. <laughs> They're resting and, and like Pete will take a picture of me and he'll be like powerlifters always on their phones in between sets uh, eating a Pop Tart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Thanks. I'm just trying uh, to be good at what I do. I wanted to ask you um, you need to get into a flow state, right? To be able to do all these things. And everybody talks about flow state mm-hmm. to be at your highest, at your peak, especially yeah. when you're at the competition. Yeah, exactly. You got to do everything right, and your yeah. mind has to be taken away somewhat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are some things that you do? Some people listen to music, some people do this. Okay. Ames likes to eat a piece of cake before. Yeah. Like, by, by cake, he means weight again, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say by cake, he meant butt. <laughs> <laughs> what are some things that you do to psych yourself in maybe a few minutes before and then yeah. right before? I think actually, it, it even starts out way before that for me to get psyched to be optimized the day of competition um i do a couple things one i i start training beforehand with the least amount of stimulus as possible Mm -hmm. um we always have like music music. like i will either cut my music out altogether Hmm. or i will listen to something fairly relaxing so that the day of competition i can listen to that stimulus to help me get amped up so all the things that I do on the day like of competition, triggers. I want to make myself sensitive to those things. Um, even caffeine. Um, a lot of times during like a longer training period for a couple of months, I'm honestly pretty dependent on caffeine. Miss Brown Eyes. But I, but I don't want to be dependent on Miss Brown Eyes. Yeah. Is that what we're calling coffee? Is that yeah, your reference? That's what okay, I, that's that's what I, that's I, I Okay, we'll call it. Miss Brown Eyes. <laughs> and Treat my well. caffeine dependency has been pretty bad. Like Ames has seen it. Like I've taken a pre-workout dry like two scoops directly into my into the back of my throat and chug Shakes a monster it. at the same time hot damn and by monster he means a drink guys yeah, yeah. he means <laughs> not chugging a monster he's not chugging any <laughs> any monsters any, <laughs> any people no monster <laughs> yeah thing. that's aim specialty yeah. <laughs> I've seen Kobayashi. videos. Kobayashi. <laughs> Kobayashi's. So, w- you know. So for like three weeks before yeah. my competition, I'll have no caffeine just to make sure that my, my tolerance um, drops as much as it can. And so so I have as much stimulation from caffeine, from music. And in terms of getting myself amped up, I will watch uh, certain videos, uh, you know, one to just get in a certain state. For example. Um, I watch uh, certain lifters or I'll listen to um, certain like motivational quotes of people just talking about Mm. something, just trying to get myself into this place where I can kind of will myself to do what has to to be done. Because there is there's just times when you're about to lift like a couple hundred pounds and you're just like, man, if you feel like you can't do it, you've already probably ruled yourself out. So true. So if you can honestly believe like for whatever reason, one just being in a better um, state of mind, but mm-hmm. also just believing in all the preparation that you've done beforehand. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, I'm going to try this to my best ability. 
I'm I'm gonna get it, yeah. but I'm also realistic that I know I might fail. Yeah. But I'm I'm gonna deal with that yeah. when it comes. Yeah, exactly. Right? I'm not gonna deal with it now. Exactly. If it exactly. happens, I'll deal with it. I I just want to know that I'm gonna give it my best shot and my yeah. honest best shot. I don't. I don't. I also don't believe in saying I'm gonna give it my best shot and expect to fail. Like I'm. If it's some. If it's a day where I'm willing to grind it out. Mm-hmm. Then I'll say I'll I'll pull this bar for as long as I have to. Um, like mm-hmm. the, my last competition, I felt like that deadlift lasted like six minutes. <laughs> um, it, it felt like it was forever. Ah. Yeah. It was fast. Yeah. I know one thing that I heard you listen to is like Hakka when I was in the gym. Oh, oh yeah, the you, all black Hakka. Yeah. Yeah. It was like one time I think I was there when you were there mm. and. It's a test. <gasps> yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm it's ready intense, to go. Yeah. They get to get you going, man. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that is one of the things that I have on my like on my phone that I listen to in my headphones. Like, specifically, before a lift, hmm. I'll just play it over and over, over and over. Um, both because of the meaning of the haka that I listen to mm-hmm. and also just, like, the tone that it Yeah, evokes. it amps yeah, you up. Yeah. The intensity of yeah. it. Yeah. Do you have, like, a um, family history roots to those people? Um. <laughs> Ames will probably joke about like saying that I do, but I, I don't. Because um, <laughs> you look like I do. <laughs> I, I, I look like really Samoan. I get stopped yeah. in the street yeah. and in like grocery stores where people just ask me, "Are, are you, you Hawaiian or Samoan?" <laughs> and it's the biggest compliment. Like, yeah, how I'm good do like, you feel? Oh, I got that one time. I'm yeah, like, brother. no, but thank you, bro. Shaka. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like, thanks, brother. Yeah, <laughs> you should go to Hawaii. You, you'll feel like you're you'll at home. Yeah, right actually, yeah. I. I went to Hawaii when I was like a teenager. Um, I was already like big. I was like five yeah. eleven, yeah, two hundred pounds already. Yeah, <laughs> a teenager. Yeah, I was sixteen. No big I'm, deal. I'm that now. <laughs> yeah. And I remember uh, going around, and everybody was just like asking me for directions. I was like, I'm not from here, man. Yeah. And then we visited the the Polynesian Cultural Center. And a bunch of the workers were like, yo, you should go to college and you could get a job here and help pay for it. That's, oh, that's crazy. I was like, man, man. I should have done that. But yeah. I was afraid of leaving home at the time. Yeah. True, true, you true. Just, I, like, I felt like I was at home. When I got there, I'm like, ah. Yeah. Mm. Was, like, I could home. breathe when I was home. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It was yeah. dope. It was I got to make my way out to Dude, Hawaii, man, yeah. it is beautiful. And the trails mm. over yeah. there, and it, it leads you right to, into, like, a waterfall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't beat yeah. that, man. I- I'll go one day. The only thing is... Everything's mad expensive. Yeah. True. Everything except like pineapples and coconuts. <laughs> yeah. Well, you if you look at home. Hawaii, I, there's one reason why I'm afraid to go to Hawaii, and that's not because of a big volcano. Because you saw touristas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Because if you look on the map, it's this little dot in the middle of this huge yes. ocean. Yeah. No. It's a dot. And you gotta feel you gotta respect the sea, yeah. man. Yeah. What if planes stop working? Uh, what if everybody forgets their plane keys? Yeah, you better, uh, you well, know I'd say, fish. well, that you wouldn't, be the, wouldn't be the worst place to get stuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that would be yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. But uh, cool, man. Uh, we're running out of time. Yep. Okay. We gotta go. Um, yeah, man, we got. But uh, yeah. Oh, um, before we head on out, AJ, uh, if anyone wants to reach out to you or hit you up, yeah. or if they want to get better How can people at their reach powerlifting. You? Uh, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I respond pretty well on that. You can find me on, um, what's my name? The Komoda Dragon. Yeah, can spell, spell, that spell that out. Spell that. It's not easy. T-H-E underscore Komoda, C-A-M-O-T-A underscore drag on there you go nice uh, hey thanks a lot man Ooh. really appreciate you yeah, jumping yeah. on with us man <laughs> hopefully check, check this man out check out his videos check out his lifts go to instagram you you will be motivated if to you want to yeah. see some heavy lifting and some heavy breathing hit me up <laughs> <laughs> thank you man and for we'll that talk soon. we are out man guys we're out peace light work that was awesome all right, guys, if you like this podcast, if you like this episode, please go to our website. Please like us on iTunes. No, no, subscribe that. to us. Do whatever you want. Come on, man. You're supposed to help. Oh, my, 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 my. Okay, let, okay. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys, if you like our podcast, please. Absolutely. There. Rate it. Subscribe. There we go. That's the aims I was Just looking for. Just freaking love it. Share it with your friends, like, your family. Like, comment, and share. <laughs> there you go. Guys, we're out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>